Hello my beautiful hammerhead and welcome back to another video, this time a little bit different than usual. So as always I'm going into this without a script, but this is for you Games Workshop. This is an idea I give you for free. This is something I've been on for a couple of years now and it is the rules and the release system. It is no big secret that I'm not the only one who is a little bit, well, I think frustrated is not the right word, more disappointed in not only the release cycle with the games, but also there seems to be a lack of the certain thing. And what do I mean by that? First of all, I prepared this. <laughs> this is what it feels like. All of, no, most of the game systems. It's butter over too much bread. And what do I mean with that? Let's go back to January the 6th this year. It was a beautiful day. It was the pre-order Saturday for Warmer the Old World. And yes, I'm willingly going into this one first. Um, there is not really a plan for my explanation here, but there is a small plan. And this sold like hotcakes. It was out immediately. And well, up until then, the marketing for this was, of course, great because there were there is obviously a big interest in the old world. So, but the problem begins with articles like this one. I know um, this is already something we talked about as it happens. I'm just gonna, uh, well, repeat it for the new people or someone who hasn't seen it because it's not possible to be up to date with everything. So we have the old world, the ice guard of Kislev. Um, go back here. This was an article from March 23 and yeah, 2020, by the way. And we see here new artworks and such because, um, yeah, well, Kislev should have been a faction for the old world. And I'm just gonna use this one as an example. Then we have May the 11th. Old World Update, Bears. That's it, Bears. <laughs> it looks phenomenal, by the way. The artworks look really, really good. But then we have this year, February the 22nd, in a totally not Old World article, Total War Warhammer 3 reinforcements arrive on Mars. And then we have down here, Fans of Warhammer the Old World should note that there aren't any current plans to bring Kislev or Grand Cathay to the tabletop for the foreseeable future. So, first of all, banging the drums with bringing these factions back into the game and then hiding it in another article that there are no plans. It feels weird, but don't Oh, I'm not gonna hang up on this right now. First of all, uh, the idea here is that uh, this comes out totally negative. It's not meant to be like that. If you know me, if you know the channel and my attitude, I'm always in the way of support what you love, don't bash what you hate. But what I love is not about, uh, not above criticism. Criticism is important, especially in a product, especially in something that we spend money on, that we spend time with, and should be fun. And I'm going willingly into the old world thematic here, because it came out half-baked. It was like, yeah, well, it came out, it was an immediately, shockingly successful thing. And I believe no one expected it to be that much. Many people expected it to be successful, yes, but not by that scale. 
So now the problem is we only have three factions as of right now. It's been already five months. We're reaching the sixth month um, time frame uh, shortly. But the dwarves are still not there. And one of the biggest problems here is also that a lot of the armies are still legacy armies. And people who have the rules for the high elves or again the dwarves or the dark elves and such they're gonna wait i even forgot if dark elves uh, dark elves are a legacy army or not i think they're a legacy army but the sales numbers are showing it and i don't have the sales numbers right out of the gate i just saw that old world was released and everything in the current Age of Sigma range that you can use or proxy in the old world was sold out immediately. It was gone. And if it came back, it was gone in a flash. So, but then we have the Horus Heresy. The Horus Heresy, we had models previewed that we haven't seen as of yet. The Apothecaries are a good example. I already forgot when they were revealed. Uh, Horus Eximant was also a while back, I believe. I don't know. I can't even keep up with it anymore. And I am someone who spends most of the waking hours with wargaming news and, as you can see, coverage of it. But it is impossible to keep up with it. And it's also impossible for Games Workshop to keep up with it. We have now four main games. Let's just see it like this one. Yes, Horus Heresy and Old World are basically specialist games, but they are big. Blood Bowl is big, yes, but not that big as Horus Heresy and, again, Old World. So now we have 40k, Horus Heresy, Age of Sigma, Old World. And we have 40k and Age of Sigma on a three-year cycle. So every three years we get a new edition with a new rulebook, with new codexes slash battle tomes. And it shows a rulebook should come out when there is something worth in the change. Also, codexes slash battle tomes should come out if there is something worth to change. The other argument for this is also something that not only I, but many people out there are saying rules should be free. I am an advocate for that. My other two favorite games, Conquest Last Argument of Kings and Star Wars Shatterpoint, have their rules for free, which is amazing. The indexes, yes, there is an argument to be made. The indexes are right now for free as well. But to be fair, they are not. And by that I mean because they will be gone and then you have to buy a codex for it. So, but we already have proof a couple of times already that Games Workshop can release rules in a quick PDF or updates in a quick PDF, like just in a moment, if it's a hotfix that has to be solved immediately, we had those. I have another example here for you. We have here the Hernkin Jaegers. You might say, okay, this is a Necromunda band. Um, we really don't need this, but it got the index update here. We can download it right now. And yes, there is an argument to be made. Again, the indexes are already free. But here is another idea. With the pre-order date yesterday, Saturday, the 8th of June, we had the Adapter Sororitas and the Gene Stealer Cults. Make the rules for free. But then we can do this round. I have this as an example because, um, yeah, well, I could have chosen another datasheet card set, but this is just on the front page right now. 
Let us buy this one with the QR code and let us do that in the app for whatever reason, if you want that. I'm still saying rules should be free, but to unlock something special for me buying this datasheet card set, just as an example. But don't punish people because it feels like a punishment. When I buy this, I can't have full access for the app, which feels really hurtful for me personally. You might feel different here. But then, if I want to go the next step, let me buy the codex or rather make it two different types here. Make this one just a law entry and make it cheaper without the datasheet cards or combine it. Let us buy both of them at the same time for that price. But people who only want the rules should not be punished or rather not the rules. I'm sorry, I'm contradicting here myself. Again, rules should be free. If you want something handy and you don't want to print it yourself, uh, because I don't like that, I rather have something like this. I have, well, well let me just show you as a quick example here. Um, this is in Star Wars Shatterpoint. When I buy a set, I have cards in multiple languages in here and I can play the, the models immediately. It's in here. Um, I think I conveyed my thoughts a little bit to you. Um, because again, rules should be free. I could have downloaded those cards on the official Atomic Mask Games site and just printed them and laminated them or whatever. But I have them. To have something, again, I would buy this. If Leaks of Wotan come out and I can do that, I will buy this. Because it's handy, because it's something that I can just switch quickly through and it is visible in one look. Again, that the codex has both the law and the rules is amazing. I like that. But don't make it mandatory with the QR code or with the, uh, not QR code, sorry, with the code in the back. It feels really, really hurtful for me personally. And again, there is another argument for the datasheet cards here. Um, let me go quickly through this um, live basically because um, if you know me I basically started with Necrons right now. The problem here is I would have bought the datasheet cards but now we're going through here and please tell me if you see the datasheet cards because those are a great thing. I really really like the datasheet cards but they are not available anymore. And they are basically just a one print for something that is really handy. But yeah, I don't want to drag this video out too long. It is just an idea. The other thing is with the rules update, not only for the battle tombs slash codexes, but also for the additions should be when it is worth to be updated and not be on a cycle because that way we don't get models that are, I don't want to say that, but it feels uninspired. We have the Space Marine Jump Pack Captain that feels like a regular Jump Pack Intercessor just with a cape and a banner on his belt. I don't know, it's... And don't get me started with the Canon S with Jump Pack. There could be so much more with the things to come and more inspired. 
and not so bland. And I don't mean that as a real negative, because there are people who like these models. And aesthetics are a really deeply personal thing, and that doesn't mean as an attack. But it just feels like there could have been more. There could have been better things and not only here is a hero and the book. And dies. <laughs> so with, again, Old World as another example. Again, not another example. The example coming back is just like, where is the rest? Do high of players have to wait another three years to play their faction if they don't have the models? Where are the dwarves? Where is everything? Again, it feels half-baked. If it is in my kitchen and I have something in the oven, I will just shove it back. But that's not possible here. It's already out in the world. I don't go to my mechanic and he hands me my car over with a half-repaired engine. I know it's a really weird comparison, but it feels like that. <laughs> um, and the three-year cycle, it's just too fast. With the campaign books, that is also another video I made a couple of months back, is the campaign books should be every half a year a book should come out and not everything crammed in the last nine to ten months of the edition because it just feels so crammed. The books feel empty. The Dawnbringer campaign books, they could have been so much more. Again, this is criticism out of love because I really want the games to be better. They're not bad. I really, really love them. This whole channel is dedicated to Wargaming and the majority of it is for Warhammer. Because I love it. But there could be so much more. And again, giving your departments time to write the law in the campaign books for models to come out with the campaign books, it could be so much better if there's a six month gap between them. Just imagine a campaign that goes over multiple years and the story not in a glacial pace because it feels like nothing is happening and still there is so much happening in the background but that does not impact the greater story. The narrative feels like it's stagnating. It's not, by the way, it's really not. It feels like it. But yeah, having maybe a four-year cycle, if you want the cycle thing, four-year cycle could have been better. Then we could have 40k, Old World, AOS, Horus Heresy. 40k, Old World, AOS, Horus Heresy. If you want that cycle with the editions, if you want that cycle with the campaign books, but then it is not everything crammed into one tiny time frame. Maybe five years, then we could have a Necromunda, a Blood Bowl, a War Cry, something. But to have a fifth year maybe could have been better than we had a year where we get updates again for Necromunda, Warcry, Kill Team, Blood Bowl, Underworlds. Yeah. But again, this video is already too long. Thank you so much for sticking with me. It is just something that sat on my heart. But please leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section down below. I am keen to know what you have to say. And while you're down there, please remember to do all the YouTube stuff because hitting buttons is not only fun. Why? Because that way we can build a bigger community and talk more wargaming almost every day. And by that I of course mean like and subscribe if you like it. And if you want, you can support me with the links in the description box down below. Otherwise, have a great day my friend.
stay fantastic, stay hydrated, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>